Hi, I'm Delisa Hunter and I'm training voices with success. Um, I'm coming to you today to talk about how to ad lib. And I'm so thrilled to bring this to you today because I just think this is the funnest topic. And um, somehow I figured out how to break it down systematically. Um, so the first thing that you have to do in order to ad lib well is you have to learn how to listen to chord structures. Um, people who ad lib are not people that just kind of go from note to note and if they fall in the key they do and if they fall out of the key, oh well. Um, you have to learn to listen to chords and say what are the notes that I'm hearing and how can I deviate from the main melody and um, still sound good. Basically, ad-libbing is putting your personal touch or your personal stamp on a song. Anybody can sing um, a main melody. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. But ad-libbing is being able to hear the different chord progressions. And I promise you, if I could play, I would. Um, but amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. How did I come up with all of that for a little old Amazing Grace? Well, I heard chords in my head, and I think I actually added some chords that aren't traditionally in the song. Um, so we're going to discuss, for example... I'm going to bite off of a Jill Scott, I think it's a Jill Scott little motif that she does, and it's like a, the soprano line is, ooh, 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 ooh. and the alto is, The tenor is okay so if I were a soprano and somebody said Delisa ad lib to this I would go Notice that even though I deviated from the main melody, I always came back to it. And that's a first rule in effective ad-libbing, not just being all over the place. Because let me tell you something, the way I sang Amazing Grace, I really wouldn't sing it that way if I were on stage. Because singing like that actually makes people kind of dizzy. Again, they just want to hear the song. Just sing the song. And although trilling is good and it adds emphasis, you don't want to do it in excess because it can be a turnoff. Most people aren't interested in all of that. I mean, if they were, then Aretha Franklin wouldn't be a star. Or people like Shaka Khan or, I mean, Luther Vandross or any of those people because they're amazing, excellent singers. But they don't trill all day long. And I think they figured out that people just want to hear a good song. They just want to hear a melody. So always come back to that. Always make sure that you know which melody you're coming from. And deviate from that melody just a bit, but always return to it. Because people always want to know where your tonal center is. And they want to feel like they can follow you. And they want to know that they have some sort of direction where you're going. And that's another point, too. Um, when you're ad-libbing, it's not really wise 
to go like, oh, <laughs> right? Going from the way top of your range, way to the bottom of your range, or you know, like, um, again, it just, it's not really in good taste, and it makes people dizzy. So, whatever testatura or range that your voice sits most comfortably in, then you should ad lib in that. And again, always try to come back to the main melody. Me personally, my most comfortable testatura, when I say my most comfortable testatura, we all, many of us have very wide ranges. Like, for example, my highest note. I don't know. I know it's a little bit, uh, just a little bit higher than high C. And I know it goes really low to some like, uh, uh, uh. but why would I sing that? That's ugly. And uh, is ugly too. So you have to find the range in your voice that's the prettiest and that you can do the most in. Figure out which parts of your range your voice can blossom in and that have the most color and give you the most um choices and expression what is easy for you to slip from head voice to chest voice and back which range is the easiest for you to do trills in or which part of your range is your voice the most agile um that is your most comfortable tessitura or range of notes we all many of us have two and three and sometimes four note four octave ranges but all of that is not usable in singing. You have to find the range that is best for you. So for me personally, um, my most, I'm, I hate that I can't find the word that I'm thinking of, but the range that is most comfortable for me is my alto range. So, ooh, ooh. so that's the main melody. So I would go, ooh, 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 and you can follow that. So that's how you make sense. You want to make sense. You want to make a statement when you sing. You just don't want to be all over the place. You want people to feel like they can follow you. You want to make a statement. Make a musical statement. Have a beginning, a middle, and an end with everything that you do. Tenors. Um, ooh, 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 ooh. I don't know where I came from with that high note, but you get it. Always find, always come back to the main melody or somehow fit that in there so that you're not just crazy and all over the place. Um, I hope that helps. I'm going to come back and I'm going to actually probably have some backgrounds and um, some more examples of ad-libbing because as you can see, I could go on for days about it. So I hope that was good. Let me know what you think. All right. Um, take care. Be blessed. Bye. And happy singing.